Today we're going to discuss how to do a duct traverse. Now what the main goal of a duct traverse is, is to find the average velocity of airflow across a duct. Uh, the reason we need this is because uh, across a duct the, uh, the airflow will vary a little bit and to get proper calculations um, of losses within a duct among other things um, you need to make sure that you have an average velocity across the whole thing. Now how we're going to do this is we're going to use this diagram from this textbook, Industrial Hygiene Control of Airborne Chemical Hazards by William Pop and North, second edition. So returning to the diagram, here it shows uh, how to properly conduct a duct traverse. Now the reason that these points vary, if you see, the depths are not equally distributed across the whole duct. This is because the cross-sectional area of a circle is not even throughout. Here, um, for the first point, since it is a small ring encompassing a large circumference, um, it covers a much larger cross-sectional area, so its depth needs to be much more shallow. The subsequent um, depths within the duct traverse are calculated based upon um, some fairly um, complex equations. Uh, it's much easier just to use a diagram such as this. So here we see that the first point within a duct traverse uh, is 0 0.044 times the diameter of the duct. Now this diameter can be calculated in inches or feet as long as you're using uh, the same units throughout, uh, whatever fits your duct best. So here we have some of the calculations for our duct specifically. Um, today we're using a four inch diameter duct um, and we used the first point of the duct traverse um, to show how to calculate it. So here we see that 0 .044 times our four inch duct diameter. Uh, which gives us a first point in the duct traverse of 0.176 inches. So what we would do is then go down and calculate each point out individually. So starting at 1.176 inches, then we would take a second point or a second measurement um, at 0.584 inches and on down the list. And then we would take all of these points and measure them to make sure to get an accurate average um, air velocity across the whole duct. Here we've set up a pitot tube to measure the velocity pressure within the duct traverse. Make sure that your instrument is set up properly to measure velocity pressure and or velocity. Uh, we are using an inclined manometer to measure inches of water gauge for velocity pressure. On our pitot tube, we've marked out each point of the duct traverse. Uh, note that it's much easier to conduct a velocity traverse when you have previously marked your instrument instead of measuring as you go. In this duct traverse, uh, we are just going to use the second and fifth points for the sake of brevity of the video. But remember that within uh, any real duct traverse, you would have to do all six points and then average the velocity pressure or velocity to make sure that you got an accurate, accurate number. Also remember that conducting one, a velocity traverse in one direction will not give a true average. You must conduct a second velocity traverse at a 90 degree angle to the original one uh, in the same spot and also average that then average the two numbers and that will give you a true velocity traverse. Remember that in an actual duct traverse, you would calculate your average from six points of a duct traverse, as well as another six points um, taken at a 90 degree angle to those original six. Here, again, we're just using the second and fifth point of the velocity traverse um, to show how to average those values. So what we got was a 0.19 um, inches of water gauge and 0.20 inches of water gauge. Here we just average those together to get 0.195 inches of water gauge and then found the velocity of the air by taking the square root of the velocity pressure multiplying it by 4005. 
giving us a final answer of 1769 feet per minute. Also remember that you must adjust these results for your local uh, air density and temperature.